Welcome to our lecture online. You may wonder where do we get the standard score Z and what does it mean and where we get the appropriate value associated with that standard score Z. So let's go back to something we're familiar with. Here we have a normal distribution. Let's say that the mean or the average is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. And we're looking for a point where X takes on the value 116.2. So first of all, what is the Z value of that point? To find the Z value, as we saw in the previous video, we take the value for X, which is 116.2, we subtract from that the mean, and we divide by sigma. So that means we get 116.2 minus 100 divided by 10, which is 16.2 divided by 10, which is 1.62. Now what does that really mean? Well, it turns out that Z represents the number of times the standard deviation we are away from the mean. So here what we're seeing is we're 1.62 standard deviations away from the mean. More than one, not yet two, somewhere in between. 1.62 times standard deviation away from the mean. So this particular point equals 1.62 times the standard deviation of 10 away from the mean which 10 times 1.62 is 16.2. Now, what about the table? Why do we need a table and what does that signify? Well, it turns out that we want to know the area underneath the curve from the mean to that particular point. And we want to know how much that represents compared to the whole area. Now, the whole area would be equal to 1, which is 100%. All values are accounted for underneath this normal distribution. There's not a single value that will not fall underneath this curve. So what percentage of all the values randomly picked from this distribution will fall between the mean and 1.62 times above the mean? 1.62 times the standard deviation above the mean is what I should have said. So. How do we find that? Well, it turns out we need a table because we already saw in the previous video that it's very difficult to actually calculate that very complicated integral. Maybe at the end of all this series of videos, we'll show you how to actually do that, but it's quite challenging. So we have this table that's pre-prepared for us. So what we need to do now is find the associated value inside the table that corresponds to a z equal to 1.62. So we start over here, we have z starting from 0, and the table usually goes up to about 4, 5, or 6, depends upon how far they want the table to go. And so we're looking for 1.62, so here we have 1.6, the next value of course in the table would be 1.7. So how do we find 1.62? Well that's why we have these horizontal numbers. We add this number to this number, and essentially we probably should put little decimal places in front of those numbers like this. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to add, in this case, 0 0.02 to 1.6 because 1.6 plus 0. Oh, yes, 0 0.02, that gives us 1.62, which is the Z value that we have over here. So essentially we come down the 0 0.02 column all the way down here and we go across this column right here and when those two meet, where the two meet, this is the number of interest. That is the area that's equivalent to the area between this point and this point underneath the normal distribution curve. So this area right here is represented by this number, 0.4738. So essentially, we could say that 0 0.44738 is equal to 44.738%. So essentially, that's almost 45% of the total area underneath that distribution curve. So all the values that fall between the mean and 1.62 times the standard deviation away from the mean all those points represent 44.738% of all the values underneath the curve. And that is how we use the table. 
We simply come here, look at the vertical number to find the first two digits of the Z. If it was 1.6, of course, we simply take this number. 1.61, we take that number, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64. If it had been 1.54, that would be 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, and we would have taken that number right there, and it would have been 43.822%. So that's how we utilize the table. It helps us find the area underneath the curve from the mean to that point where we have to calculate what that point is in terms of the Z number or the Z score. And once we have the Z score, we can go to the table and find the percentage of the area represented by this region relative to the entire curve, which of course is 100% for the entire curve. And that is how we use the table.